Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. There is not going to be a chicken update or a garden update. I'm going to do that separately. We've been tweaking things and moving things around. Some of you may have noticed that the start of some of my most recent videos have been a bit different. So we've been like playing and tweaking things a bit and the Sunday Musing is going to be a, a bit of a revamp as well. What I want to talk to you about today is not related directly to my pickup truck that I'm sitting in right now, the Ford F-150 Lightning, but it is related to the extreme heat that many people are experiencing in the Northern Hemisphere right now. The UK, Europe had some pretty terrifyingly hot weather recently, breaking new records, lots of people dying, lots of wildfires, even in the UK, which is very, very unheard of. And here in the United States, the majority of the US is now under a heat warning. Now, I know I'm wearing a hoodie right now because it's late in the evening, but tomorrow we start a new heat dome here in Oregon and we're expecting temperatures from the 90 degree Fahrenheit upwards. So kind of 30 something all the way up to 40 something. When we were filming here a couple of weeks ago, it hit 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So 40 something degrees Celsius on my driveway. We have a bit of a sun, a bit of a sun trap. So it gets very hot here. And obviously living in a very tree centric state we've got lots of trees here in oregon i actually live in a forestry area we are familiar with the concept of power cuts when there's extreme weather whether it is really really bad cold weather and there's there's challenges then with with downed power lines or whether it's extreme heat combined with heavy wind and at that point or rather strong wind and at that point power companies shut off power to lower the risk of a power line coming down and causing a brush fire, which can also obviously be a forest fire. And we had a letter a couple of weeks ago from the local utility company, PGE, not to be confused with PG&E, saying, hey, we might have to turn your electricity off in a couple of weeks if this weather gets really bad. And so I want to know from you, if you're watching this, if you have any strategies as to how you're going to survive if your power gets cut off because of extreme weather, whether that is extreme cold, whether that is extreme heat as we are facing right now, or whether that's for a different reason. Now, obviously, I'm sitting in the bed of the Transport Evolved F-150 Lightning Lariat. We have pro power on board so we can actually pull power out of the truck to run essential items in the home even though we do not yet have the ford intelligent backup power system or the ford intelligent home integration system i think that's what they call it we don't have that yet we're hoping to get that in the future and review it on the channel but of course there are plenty of other ways that people can be ready for power cuts whether it is you have a car that has a mains inverter on board as my truck does, whether you have a beefy 12 volt to mains power inverter, so you can run that off your car. Maybe you're somebody who has one of those uh, Jackery or similar camping battery packs with, you know, the portable solar panels that allow you to charge essential items like mobile phones and keep communications running, maybe even run your refrigerator at a push. Is that what you're planning on doing? Or maybe you're someone who's like, nope, the power's gonna go out. I don't need power. I've got everything I need. I've got a, a backup solution. I know uh, some people, for example, if they live out in the country as I do, and they have, uh, they have a, a no mains water, they, they're getting their water from a well, and they've got a septic system. Some people I know have a, a effectively a port -a loo or a port -a potty or whatever you want to call it that you can use if the power goes out and you you know throw some sawdust in between uses and that can help ensure that your sanitation needs are met when the power goes out even if you may not have access to mains electricity. I would love to know your thoughts. Um, I know some of you will have power walls and other devices but let's hear the whole gamut. Let's hear from everybody who 
you know, doesn't have a solution, but maybe has some cool and innovative ways to keep things, um, keep food, you know, from spoiling or ensure that they can continue to, to, to keep the house cool. Um, maybe people are going to run stuff off their car. Maybe people are just going to go, you know what? Uh, I'm going to jump into my car with my dog and my cat and, and go somewhere else where I know there's going to be power. So leave your thoughts below and um, we will we will share some with your permission on social media maybe and we can talk about some of the cool ways that people are preparing for extreme weather and how they are going to keep their home or their sanity intact uh, when the mains power goes out or maybe you are one of those really rare people who has an off-grid home i'd love to live uh, in an off-grid setup because i think that is the ultimate in uh, survival readiness for when the mains power goes off. Anyway, that is it for today's video. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget that you can also leave your thoughts below or on our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you really liked today's video, please do leave it a super thanks. It's really easy to do and everything you do send our way goes towards helping make great content. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel and our main channel, Transport Evolved. Uh, this is Transport Evolved Take Two. And give both bells a gentle ding to be told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew. Go out to everyone who makes TE possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as everybody who just watches and shares the video on both this channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and our main channel. If you are a supporter at the charged up level, you will see your name right here on my right hand side. And if you have just joined, don't worry if your name is not there yet. As I've said multiple times in the last few weeks, we render videos of names every week or so. So sometimes it takes a while for those names to populate. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Mo Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Dan Blair, Jim Burness, Chris Asantar, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde. And of course, super out of this world thanks to our top tier supporters. They are Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Grayley, Matthew Drobnak, Blue Says Hello, Kevin Burrowbridge, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. If you would like to join that amazing group of people, regardless of how much that you are able to donate a month. You will find links below to Patreon. You can join the channel on the main channel, that is, uh, over at Transport Evolved's main YouTube channel. Or indeed, you can head to Kofi. You can go to our swag store and buy some of our new swag. Or indeed, you can send us Bitcoin if you are feeling cryptocurrency-like. We are going to be preparing some actual real world merch soon. And so if you are a Patreon supporter already, keep your eyes open for some new questionnaires regarding merch. Thank you to everyone who filled out our reader survey form from last uh, from last month. And I will be back soon with more great content. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.